right, everyone. I want you to reflect back onto the best years of your life. Take a moment. You can close your eyes if you feel the need to. You were all thinking about puberty, right? Wait, y'all were? Okay, yeah, your body is rapidly changing, but it is also the time of your life you began having your own ideas of the world, who you want to be. You see, I thought puberty would be the time I'd really start feeling like a woman. And at such a young age, I thought there were only three defining things to feeling like a woman. Be pretty, be skinny, and have a cute boyfriend. Boom, womanhood. <laughs> but instead, during puberty, I began having male pattern balding. Yeah, y'all heard that right. Extremely oily skin and gained about uh, 30 pounds in the span of one summer. This is definitely not how Tiger Beat described puberty to me. <laughs> my mother and I knew that those symptoms were not normal, but my general practitioner and a dietitian would say, oh, you're fine. You just need to eat better, take your vitamins, and you'll outgrow this. I refused to fall into that checkup checklist where they ask me the same questions they ask all of their patients and don't fully hear my problems. Finally, at age 17, after five years of worsening symptoms, 30 plus doctor's appointments and countless times I had to miss school, I was finally at the ripe age to see a gynecologist. Now, this is pretty typical coming-of-age protocol to see a gyno around age 17, you know, boom, womanhood. Uh, but I saw it as an opportunity to speak to another doctor I never had talked to before and see if they had any idea what I had. In a matter of a few moments, without a doubt in her mind, she told me that I had polycystic ovarian syndrome, or PCOS for short which is a hormonal disorder responsible for all of my symptoms. In the matter of five minutes, this doctor diagnosed me with something I'd battled with for five years. But it turns out PCOS affects the lives of approximately one in 10 women and is the leading cause of female infertility. If there are so many affected, why did it take countless years and multiple doctors to diagnose me with something that seems to be so massive? Often, general practitioners do not know of this diagnosis or think to refer you to a specialist. And this, unfortunately, can be seen across all women's healthcare. Many times when women are describing their symptoms, they can be written off as being emotional sometimes flat out dramatic, which can downplay getting a diagnosis extremely, especially when the diagnosis isn't in that certain doctor's wheelhouse. Federal law actually didn't even require the inclusion of women and minorities in clinical research until the Revitalization Act was passed in 1993. Now this created a gap in knowledge and funding on knowing women's bodies as compared to men's. Now, I don't believe this blind spot in the medical world was deliberate, but I do think it's a perfect example how women have not been treated equally for centuries and the effects of that are still lingering. It's not about individual doctors not caring about their female patients or not wanting to treat them the same but it's the fact that we don't have enough medical research to treat women. All right, men, you have to admit it. Majority of you have probably never heard of PCOS. It's all right, I take no offense. But women, we all know what Viagra is and what it's used for. <laughs> now, I'm not trying to point fingers at your primary care physician and their credibility, all that I'm saying is there's not enough medical research to treat women. Basically, only in recent years has there been funding for this medical research for women's issues, and this research is vital in helping all doctors better diagnose women. Luckily, 
I grew up in Metro Atlanta, where I had access to a plethora of doctors and was able to go to my gynecologist and get a diagnosis and then get referred to my lovely endocrinologist who actually specializes in PCOS. But what about all the other women who may not have access to proper reproductive health care? In fact, 110 out of the 159 counties in the state of Georgia have inadequate or no OBGYNs or gynecologists, which was the doctor to diagnose me and most other women living with PCOS. Imagine having all of those terrible symptoms and just no answers, because the doctor who could diagnose you was an hour away, a couple counties over, and that's just the state of Georgia. Imagine what it looks like for the rest of the country. This disparity continues to break my heart because I still vividly remember the countless times I sat in my mom's car and bawled after another doctor told me to just take my vitamins and eat better. The thought of so many women having nowhere to find answers sends a shiver down my spine because this isn't just something that makes you gain an extra 30 pounds or gives you difficulty having children later down the road. A study published in 2015 showed that women living with PCOS are twice as likely to be hospitalized for mental health conditions, heart disease, diabetes, reproductive disorder, and cancer of the uterine lining. This is no longer a cosmetic nuisance or an infertility issue, but something that can lead to long-term health concerns when undiagnosed and untreated. Okay, a little secret. Um, most of the facts that I've told you in the last five minutes, yeah, those weren't told to me in a doctor's office. To my surprise, I found a whole online community of sisters that are very knowledgeable in our disorder. And yes, women living with PCOS decided to give us the cringy name of sisters. <laughs> After reading these women's blogs, watching their videos, and hearing their stories, I found out that it was really common for women living with PCOS to have difficulty getting a diagnosis. And as much as that sucks for all of us, it made me feel a bit less crazy. It made me feel like someone finally understood me after all of those years. These women made me realize that I don't need to be embarrassed to find answers about the disorder or to seek help and advice with the difficulties this disorder has given me. Asking for help, seeking advice, should not be looked upon as a weakness because as human beings, it is our biggest strength. All right, non-sisters, time for you to perk up, sit straight in your seat. Why should you care? Well, it could be your sister, your girlfriend, your wife, your mom, but all of that shouldn't even matter. It's about having compassion for all, even if you cannot relate. It is already known that women are not heard enough and it is compounded for women of color and those who do not have access to proper health care. You may not be the researcher or the doctor to help me find the cure, but you're someone who can still listen. Feeling heard can change someone's life, and I know that because it did for me. So what would I go back and tell myself when going through the dreaded puberty? I would tell her to advocate for her doctors to go beyond the checkup checklist because women's health matters. I would tell her that she does not need to be afraid because there's a whole community of women ready with open arms to help her through the realities of PCOS. I would tell young Tot that she can be cute with 30 extra pounds and some male pattern balding, there is no cure, but this movement is just getting started. Stay informed, push for equal rights, and find a community that makes you feel sane. 
well, I finally feel heard and I have my voice and we need your support. So I'd like to formally invite you to join the sisterhood. Thank you.